Let's take a look at the Mini Weld Model 7. This is an airless plastic welding kit, which I'm hoping may prove useful for joining 3D printed parts. I got together a pile of scrap parts printed from various filaments and also some PVC pipe, so I'm going to use these to test out the plastic welding rods that come with the Mini Welder. First of all, the unboxing. So let's see what comes in the kit. By the way, I started out working indoors with a carbon filter running, but quickly discovered the fumes were too noxious for indoor use. I'll show you my very first attempt at plastic welding, then the review will magically move outside. So in this sturdy case, we have an instruction manual, a DVD with detailed video instructions and the ubiquitous branded bumper sticker. There is a selection of plastic welding rods, including Fiberflex, which supposedly bonds to most plastics. Also a wire brush for cleaning the welding tip. Then there's the welding rig itself, which consists of a temperature control unit, the wand and two hot tips, one for plastic rods and one for Fiberflex. It's a plug and play setup, so let's do exactly that. I'm going to try ABS first, so I'm dialing to the ABS slice of pie on the temp control. While that's preheating for a couple minutes, let me show you my indoor attempt with ABS. Not only was my ventilation system not enough and the fumes everywhere, but also I did not have the pieces clamped down. So definitely don't do it that way. Instead, let's move outside and get some pieces clamped down. Obviously, the reason for using clamps is that the plastic welding requires both hands, plus the application of pressure to mush together the welding rod and welding subjects. The scrap parts I'm using for this first test are printed in glass fiber reinforced PETG. The first thing I'm noticing here is that it takes a little bit of coordination to keep a good amount of pressure on the plastic rod in my left hand while spreading melted plastic with the hot end with my right hand. The plastic rod gets more wobbly and wants to move around once it gets melted into the hot end. You get the hang of it pretty fast though. Once a section of seam is covered in ABS, I'm free to go back over that area to smooth it out. The instructions recommended melting the hot tip into the piece you're welding to mix some of the source material in with the newly added plastic to get the best bond. But for most 3D print applications, that's probably not gonna be practical. Here, for example, the parts were thin and got more deformed the longer I worked at the joint. This is also because the melting point is too high on ABS for PETG parts, but it sure bonds well, right through to my workbench in fact, and the pieces are permanently joined for sure. There was a lump of plastic stuck burning in the welder tip, so I grabbed this scrap metal rod to clean it out and that worked great, so it's now part of my kit to accompany the wire brush. The next welding material I'm going to try is polyurethane. So I'm setting the heat control to PUR and I'm then gonna clean off the rest of the ABS with that wire brush. The brush works well, except I can't seem to get off all the burnt flakes, so they show up in the next batch of plastic fed through, which in this case, it's no big deal. So polyurethane, I like this one. It's got the lowest melting point, so I can easily go back over to smooth things out and work it into the cracks and there's minimal fumes. The test subjects here were printed in Armadillo by Ninja Tech, fantastic filament, and the polyurethane welding material is bonding great. With one side done, we have this hinge effect, which could prove useful on its own, but for this test, I wanna see how easy it is to weld together a good solid piece, so I'm doing the other side too. And that was awesome. The pieces are now combined, very strong, can't pull or twist them apart, and I got the joint pretty smooth with minimal work. Next up is the polyurethane weld again, but on semi-flex printed parts this time. Again, excellent filament. Previously, I had some trouble joining semi-flex parts on my Edward Elric Automail costume, so I'm looking forward to using plastic welding instead of hot glue for that type of joint on my upcoming Witch King of Angmar costume. Like the armadillo filament, Semiflex bonded great with the polyurethane welding material that came in the kit. I got a nice sturdy joint without melting and deforming the test parts, so definitely the poly material yellowed and picked up burnt debris left from the ABS, but that won't matter on something that's going to be painted over as I plan to do. At this point, I'm just having fun trying it on the glass fiber PET G2. It bonds great to that filament also, and that polyurethane is just easy to work with and smooths out beautifully. Now it's time for nylon. 
Gotta kick the heat up to the nylon setting for this one. Now the parts are scrap nylon prints and so of course the nylon welding material bonds completely. It's not as smooth going on as the polyurethane. It's a little more work to heat and smooth everything, but the joint created is strong. Probably stronger than the print itself. It doesn't come apart no matter how much you pull or twist the joint. Let's try that Fiberflex, which is supposed to be strong and stick to most plastics. I didn't bother to change the tip since I'm working with small surface areas. The test parts here are printed in PLA. Right away, I am not loving how this material feels. The temperature is cranked up hot, but it's still difficult to melt through the rod and get it to stick. Also, because the heat has to be so high, it's melting and deforming the PLA some around the edges, even though per the instructions, I'm only trying to spread the Fiberflex over the seam, not melt and mix in the base material, but it doesn't want to smooth out. Trying it now on some scraps printed from carbon fiber fill PLA, same issue, temp is too high, it's difficult to smooth, doesn't want to stay stuck to the test prints. Uh, the joint looks okay while it's warm, but once it's cooled, it peels apart way too easily. Uh, we'll see that peeling action on this next test using PVC pipe. I spread the Fiberflex over the seam, let it cool, but immediately it broke once pressure was applied, and the Fiberflex peeled off easily, it just didn't bond at all. I'm going to forget Fiberflex for now, um, clean off my welding tip and see if any of the other plastic rods that came with the kit sticks to PVC pipe. I want to do some test patches just to see what happens. So I tried TPO, LDPE, polypropylene, and ABS. Only ABS bonded to the PVC. Uh, the rest peeled off as soon as they cooled. Uh, testing the bond strength with a craft knife, only the corner of the ABS didn't bond, where I hadn't melted it down quite all the way. So I redid that PVC joint the same way, except using ABS instead of Fiberflex, and it made for a really cool, strong joint. So plastic welding is fun and addictive because it's so satisfying to fix and smooth the joints. The Mini Weld 7 Airless Plastic Welder works as promised. It heats fast, stays evenly hot, easy cleanup with the provided wire brush. So I am looking forward to testing this on real projects in the near future. Next time I want to test the Mini Weld 7 using actual 3D printing filaments to form the joint instead of the rods provided in the kit. So stay tuned to see how that turns out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that follow-up video. As usual, this is a completely unsponsored, unbiased review. I do have the Amazon link in the description if you want to give the Mini Welder a try. It helps me out greatly when you use my Amazon link, so thanks very much for watching. I will see you back here soon.